Hey guys, welcome back to Weekenders on the Water. Today we're here in the garage and today we're going to be replacing the flush port on this 2017 SeaDoo GTI SE130. So if you want to know how to do it and how to keep your SeaDoo afloat, then you're in the right place. Make sure you stick around, check it out, hit the subscribe button, and let's go. Let's go. All right, y'all, like Lewis said, we're here in the garage today. Yes, your girl is gonna help. Don't know how I'm gonna help, but we're gonna help. Apparently Lewis isn't very helpful, so we'll see about that. All that being said, we're here, we're in the garage, we're gonna fix the mycedo. So we noticed when we came back from Bimini a few months ago that there was water leaking in through the port. So Lewis is gonna show us how to fix it. Yeah, so that was a flush port, and I think that was largely my own, uh, my own fault. So I don't think it was, you know, sink do issues or anything like that. I think it was just, operator error and I'm man enough to accept my <laughs> mistakes and Aww. today we're going to fix one of those. That's growth babe. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, okay. All right. So we're going to fix it and I'm going to help. So right. let's go. And before we get started, I would just like to say, yes, the garage is a mess. Don't come first in the comments. Uh, it's a garage. Just, it's a garage. Right? So, yeah, it's a garage. <laughs> it's actually not nearly as bad as it usually is. Mm, that's true. All right. Here we go. Here is our current flush port. You can see how chewed up it is from the last time that we had to re reinstall it. Had a heck of a time getting it in there. Mm -hmm. Fought with it. Uh, here is the new one. Uh, as you can see, it's also got a special plastic piece around that this one does not have. So mm. I don't know if I lost that or <laughs> <laughs> whatever Oops. happened to that. Yeah. Uh, but basically, this is the new one. You can see, get a good look at it here. Here is the part number for that. If you want to take a screenshot, there you have it. Or we'll put it in the description down below. Drain neck assy, that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, assembly. <laughs> nope, that says assy. Okay. Yeah. So basically, this has got a quick release hose port installed on that. Mm -hmm. There is some controversy about these uh, because basically this is where your sea is gonna cool off while it's running. I believe the water comes out of this, shoots mm -hmm. out of this while you're running. Uh, and the controversy is, okay, well, maybe you're taking this size port down to that size port and maybe potentially not getting as good of cooling mm -hmm. as you could potentially um, is what I've heard the argument. But if you look inside there, you'll see that it actually already is down to a fairly small size. And you can kind of see that even better on the new one here. You can see the size on the new one versus this uh, quick connect that it's really roughly about the same size already. So I don't think that this restricts your cooling at all. And I've never had any problems with this. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think this is a lifesaver. The reason that it's installed in the first place and the reason that I have these issues with this one is because when I had hooked a hose up here once to drain the, to flush this out, the hose got stuck and this whole assembly spun oh. and that's what came out. But now by doing this one, it's a more of a click in, you know, so mm. th you leave this in here all the time and you hook your hose on there, mm. click in, uh, and you don't have to worry about twisting this port out. But as you can see, when I reinstalled it, we re I was so mad that day. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of emotions that day. I remember that day. Yeah. A lot of cuss words. It's, it's, it's a bear. Yeah. So I, I think I tightened it too much and you can see the gasket kind of twisted and mm -hmm. popped out of place. So some people have mentioned putting some RTV or some silicone around this as well to kind of help mm -hmm. fill that gap even more. Mm -hmm. That may not be a bad idea, but the shop manual does not say anything about that. Obviously you're supposed to just use the one that's on there. So I think that's how I'm going to go uh, and uh, we'll, we'll test it out and see. I mean, it should work like stock, so it shouldn't leak. So that's the plan for today. Basically, the way that this works is we're going to take the old one off. We're going to screw the new one in, ratchet, and connectivity, you know, drive assembly in there. So that's what you're going to use to slide it in there and twist it. On the other side, this is what it looks like. It's a little coupler. So it's basically just a big nut, and the whole thing kind of screw. Uh, I think it's backwards, yeah. So it screws together like that. So you can see, I don't know why they didn't, like reverse thread this or something, but that's your problem is mm. as you're now you're trying to twist this hose out, this thing here has a tendency to spin and come mm -hmm. loose and then the whole assembly comes out. So mm. that's a problem. I've got this as a replacement, but I don't think I need it today. Here is the part number for that. If you want that piece, uh, we'll put that in the link below, but I don't think I'm gonna use it today. Okay. Basically because you have to pay for shipping uh, whenever I order parts if they're cheap enough like this was like a couple bucks This was probably like three or four dollars. and I think this was like ten bucks mm -hmm. Shipping would have been like ten or fifteen dollars So I just went ahead and ordered both of them in case I need this that I already have it I'd rather buy it once and pay for shipping than uh, have, Need it later and not have it and have to pay for shipping a second time. So mm -hmm. that was the thought process All right, so up from the top of the sea way way back in there See if we can even get the light all the way back in there. 
and then zoom in see if it focuses so that is the drain assembly it's way back there behind the exhaust so that's what we're going to try to get a hold of i don't know if there's a better way to do this i wish there were but really basically you gotta have really long arms <laughs> <laughs> and lewis qualifies <laughs> and two people so I i'm qualify. I'm like six foot two and I can barely reach this with a wrench in my hand. So I'm going to reach back there and grab a hold of it with a pair of pliers. And then Christine's going to work on it from the outside with the driver. And like I said, it's just a three quarters inch driver just going to go slide in there. So she's going to do lefty Lucy while I hold on to this uh, and that should pop the old one out. And then we'll slide the new one in and reverse the process. Great. So wish us luck. Right. Am I going to break anything? No. You have a lot of confidence in me. Okay. Okay. So fun facts. I am typically not very mechanically inclined. That's why I married my husband. So hopefully I don't break anything. I'm gonna slide that, slot that right in the hole. Switch side. All right, and then we're gonna go lefty Lucy. Okay. See if it comes out on its own. It may. Why is it so sandy? It's salt. Um. Yeah, it looks like it's actually coming out. Yeah, the uh, O-ring popped off? Yeah, but I can feel the hose oh. did not loosen. Okay. So I'm going to have to get inside, and, and I've got a pair of pliers. So and I'm going to grab a hold of this nut that's on the back here. Okay. And then she's going to continue to twist. So we will not be able to show you what Lewis is doing because he can't hold both the wrench and the camera at the same time. So you're just going to get my POV. There you go. All right, I see, too, that there's also actually, you know, on this hose that connects here, um, there's actually a worm clamp that's on there. So I'm gonna take a um, Phillips head screwdriver and, and loosen that. That'll probably let it off that hose and let the, the existing one come out. Okay. So again, I can't really show you how to do that because it's tight in there, but you know how to use a worm, a worm clamp at this point. Hopefully, I don't even know what a worm clamp is. Mm. So update, Lewis said it was a Phillips head, not a flat head. It's a flat no. head, not a Phillips it's head. It's a flat head, not a Phillips head. But actually, I'm gonna try to see if I can do it with a, with a ratchet instead. Okay. We're gonna try to get that worm through with a one quarter inch socket that seems to be the right size. and. Should be a little bit easier than trying to get a full screwdriver down there, so that's the plan. What's happening right now? <laughs> Long boy arms, activate. Yeah, I can't see and reach at the same time. Okay. That's always the problem with this. I think maybe if I can get this coolant bottle here out of the way, mm -hmm. I'll have a little bit more room to crawl crawl further in there. So I take these two 10 millimeters bolts here off the top. All right, so we got that loose. We're just gonna set it off to the side here. And then I think that should probably give me a little bit more room to kind of crawl back in there. I can probably even take this off too, this exhaust pipe, if I, if I need more space. Okay. So let's see. All right, so here's the end of that pipe. Uh, and you can see it's just got a worm clamp on it. But the problem I was having was this worm clamp was kind of bent up and so I couldn't get a socket on there. But yeah, it's a quarter inch socket. Uh, so without that socket, I had to put a flathead screwdriver on there, a stubby one, in order to make it fit. I've bent it back now so I can get that quarter inch back on there. So when we reinstall it, it should be easier. Now that the hose is off on the other side, this should just screw out. There it goes. Hmm. Easy as that. Just kind of clean up some of the salt there, but then we'll just pop the new one in. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy crawling, crawling all the way back there. Definitely removing that um, coolant reservoir mm -hmm. was a huge help. That gave me like an extra two inches, and that's, yeah. that's what that's... every man needs, right? <laughs> All right, so with that, we're going to install the thing now. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so from this end, it's pretty simple. Just thread it back in there. We'll give it a little bit of a tighten down. I don't want to do too much mm -hmm. to the point where we, um, you know, pop Break that in. gasket out again. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to just tighten it up and just give it like a half an ugga dugga. That's an ugga dugga. Ugga dugga. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. It's your torque spec. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's true. <laughs> don't, don't. I don't think that's true. Well, it's the. It's the German Gutentight. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. We're most of the way there. Now it's just the again the hard part once over. So now that I fixed that worm clamp, I uh, should be able to get my quarter inch uh, ratchet on there, and then hopefully maybe that'll be a little bit easier than that flathead screwdriver. I hate flathead screwdrivers. I know they're like really old school and everything, but my personal opinion, they should be outlawed, except for like decorative purposes. Mm. Everything else should be at least a Phillips head, more so like a star bit, Torx bit, Robin's head, 
uh, torques, yeah, <laughs> invert, inverse torques, something. Get rid of flatheads. <laughs> why, why are we still using this? This is not 1800s. Oh, okay. We have feelings about that. Rant over, all right? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I think we have success and only had one injury. So I'm going to call it a, I'm going to call it a good night. <laughs> Lewis may have a difference of opinion, but you know, only one minor injury, a little bit of blood. We're fine. A lot of cursing. All the cursing. <laughs> a lot of F-bombs. Yeah, definitely removing that, um, that coolant bottle was key. Yeah. And then if you're lucky and your clamp's not all bent up like mine, it maybe it won't take, take you so long, but uh, if you're under six feet tall good luck i'm sorry it's a struggle yeah. anyways last thing to do so we don't have to go through this again is we're going to reinstall our um quick hose quick connect so that just screws on we'll put a link in the description down below where you can pick these up mm -hmm. it's not a sea standard part but mm -hmm. these kind of work for like garden hoses and stuff and it's basically the same thing yeah so um, make sure you get a make sure you get a plastic one though so it doesn't rust okay. So we like that because whenever we flush our ski, it's a really quick thing to plug in and plug out. I'm linked down below where we've done a mobile flush at the Dunedin Causeway. So yeah. yeah. So if you want to know what to do when you're not at home and you don't have access to a hose, but you want to flush your jet ski, mm -hmm. uh, we came up with a pretty good s solution to that. And we'll put that link in the description down below of how you can do that while you're on the go. And we call that the mobile flush. And by we, Lewis, because of course. Yeah. Okay. So it looks a lot better, brand new, not all scuffed up. Mm. And then we'll just, uh, Reinstall that. Yeah, good job, babe. Easy peasy. Right. All right. And that's that. All right, guys, and that's going to do it for us today. Remember, hit that subscribe button if you learned something today. We really appreciate it. It's a brand new channel. We're still on the drive for a thousand subscribers. So if you hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world to us, and we really appreciate that. With that being said, we're out of here, and we'll see you next weekend. Bye. You got to get down here. Oh, okay. And there is some controversy. Oh, hang on, where am I looking? Okay. You can see the size, the hole there. All right, no, say no, say no. It's, uh, can you hold it like sideways? No, don't pull it back. No, no, wrong, wrong sideways. Okay, no, 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 no. Yes, but, but, but up. Manual or the, the shop manual doesn't. My knee is killing me. Hang yeah, on, mine I, too. I got to pivot. All right, so we're going to try to get that worm screw with a one quarter inch ratchet. That seems to be. Uh, socket. Let, let me hold it. Right. Got a big shot in the background, but it's okay. All right, now. All right, so that seemed seemed to have worked. His head's in there, so hopefully we'll be able to get it out. Oh, nope. Can't use that.